this was cool. So uh, I'll do some quick introductions to uh, today's uh, session. Uh, first of all, I'm Sam Harding. I'm the coordinator for Creative Bexley, the local cultural education partnership in Bexley, working very closely with the chair uh, and also director of education at the Odyssey Trust for Education, Stephen Berriman, um, who is also part of the team. Uh, and also here today we have uh, Liz Coombe, who is from Sound Connections, who have supported um, and facilitated a lot of the work that's gone into finding out about young people's views on arts and culture in the London Borough of Bexley. Um, so I'll hand over to them very shortly, just a quick uh, mini housekeeping from uh, housekeeping thing from me, but um, I'm sure that throughout the session you may have uh, questions or comments that arise. If you do, uh, please feel free to make use of the chat function on Zoom, and if we get time at the end, we will come to that and ask those questions uh, at the end. So, uh, in the meantime, I shall now hand over to Stephen. Would you like to take over? Thank you, Sam. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, <laughs> which is a slight being on BBC News. It's so lovely to see everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. This is this small piece of work. It seems small. It's a huge piece of work. Hugely grateful to Liz, and I'll pass over soon. But I wanted to quickly introduce you to Creative Bexley. And Creative Bexley is a CEP, a cultural education partnership, one of many across the UK. There's over 100 now, if not more. And they are collectives of organisations in an area which work hopefully collaboratively uh, and in partnership to enhance the opportunity for arts and culture education for children and young people. And we have been in development now, we're in our second year, we're hugely grateful to a new direction who support us through the Challenge London programme. Hi Jack, who's here today, um, and as well as our match funders Peabody and Bow Arts. Hugely grateful because through that match funding we were able to apply for the Challenge London funding and that funding has enabled us to appoint Sam, who is joining us as a Creative Bexley coordinator, who's helping to move some of the operational work now in our second year. Our first year is very much about learning, getting to know the borough, getting to know our partners, and obviously through the challenges of COVID, we've done our best to do some of that work. And a big piece of work we commissioned from Hounds Connections last year was this youth consultation. It's so important for us as a group of partners that we build on the interests, the aspirations, and needs of young people in Bexley and we were keenly aware through the challenges of the pandemic it would be very hard to reach young people but we're hugely grateful to Sound Connections and have enabled this work to take place through unusual times and I know Liz will show but we had a huge response to the consultation and the process of putting the consultation together all facilitated by Sound Connections was about uh, building on our aspirations for the partnership very much about providing the space for young people to have a say in their experience of arts and culture. We're keenly aware of inclusion is important for Bexley. We want to make sure we reach a wide variety of people. It's still early days for our partnership, but we do have some pilot projects beginning in the new year. We've got a big project with Bow Arts starting with a group of schools. We've got a project with Arts Train. We've got a project with Speech Bubbles as well. Speech Bubbles aren't one of our partners, but who knows in the future. But we're really pleased that we can test out these ways of working. And all of these ways of working have been informed by the interim learning of the youth consultation, particularly the idea around knowing what is on offer in your area. Um, and two thirds of young people were not completely clear about what arts and culture existed in the borough. So just hugely grateful that this learning today we're sharing, we'll share more widely after today as well, but I'm hoping it will inspire all our partners and anyone who's working with young people in Bexley to just build on their, their awareness of arts and culture, what it means to them, and how we can work in partnership to help reach more young people. So thank you for joining. And I'm gonna hand over now to, to Liz to share some of the findings from the report. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Sam, can you turn over to the next slide? Thank you. So we've got a little quote here, which is from the one of the surveys that we did. And it said, life would be so boring without creativity and the power to, um, embrace ourselves. Bexley should give us more of a voice, which I thought was yeah fantastic, and is part of a a bigger quote where this um, eleven year old uh, gives you know lots of great ideas around things that should happen in Bexley. Um, Sam, if you can go to the next slide. Oh. 
Fab, thank you. So a little bit about us at Sound Connections. So we are a sector support organisation. Our history is rooted in music and we started as a youth music action zone for London founded by the National uh, uh, Foundation for Youth Music um, about 20 years ago. But since then we've gone on to develop um, our work around youth voice and participation, strategy and evaluation, and we work with organisations across London, but also nationally and across the four nations, um, supporting organisations to listen to young people, to find out what, what they're interested in and, and what they want to do, and then helping organisations to develop their offer accordingly. So as Stephen mentioned, uh, they commissioned us in April uh, this year to come and do some work with, um, with Creative Bexley. And so we set about, um, you know, thinking about what do, uh, what did the partners want to find out from young people in the borough? And through that, we then developed um, a survey which would go out across the borough and then, um, some more focus groups that would be a bit more in depth speaking to a variety of different children young people in different settings um, which has resulted in this survey this um, sharing event today and we've also got a one pager for children young people which explains what we've done what they've told us and then what we've recommended so that they have also have got something um, tangible from this process so uh, moving on to the next slide um, the first question we asked was around language and um, we had quite a lot of discussion around this in the uh, partnership meetings around you know, what do we mean by arts, culture and creativity and us as professionals and practitioners using these words, but, you know, we work in these settings, you know, so maybe we have different understanding of what that meant. So we wanted to find out what young people thought and how they identified. And it's quite interesting that arts, they think of the action, so painting, drama, theatre, music, visual arts, culture is much more linked to identity. Um, so thinking about their heritage, community, background, places, food, religion, race, ethnicity, um, traditions and beliefs. And creativity was a bit more abstract. So thinking about how they express themselves, new ideas, being yourself, originality, imagination, thinking as well as visual art. So that's just an interesting thing to note. Um, we don't have a suggestion on how you speak with young people about it, but it's just something quite interesting to, to think about when we are um, working with young people, the words that we're using, what do they understand by them? So moving on to the next slide. So the second thing that we found out was that arts, culture and creativity are important to really important to the majority of young people in Bexley, which is fantastic. However, the current offer doesn't meet their needs with 64% of respondents not being aware of any activity or creative spaces in, in the borough which is quite interesting um, and something that you know as a as a uh, cultural education partnership i'm sure that you are looking to address then we asked them about what type of activities they take part in and it is a massive massive variety so whilst they love it but they don't know where things are, they're still managing to participate. And unsurprisingly, this is the majority of this has been at home or online because of the pandemic. They um, mainly take part on their own or with their friends. And the key reasons that they do so are because it's fun, it helps them to develop their skills and it supports their well-being and mental health and helps them to make friends and socialise, which I think is really um, interesting and important for us as professionals to um, 
you know, to to remember a, about it being fun and, you know, what, what young people are, are gaining from these things and how can we ensure that the experiences they're having are, are positive. The main barriers that they face are time um, in lots of different ways. So whether that's that school is super busy um, or colleges or that they don't have enough time within their curriculum to do creative and arts um, subjects, you know, it came up a lot, as did money, you know, it being a challenge to pay um, to take part in things, even if it's subsidised, including then having to pay for travel and having to get to and from places. And then there were also a lot of um, concerns around COVID, understandably, um, and then again, um, the fact that they were unsure of where to find opportunities. So they don't know where to look necessarily. So wherever we're promoting um, these opportunities are not necessarily filtering down to these young people, it seems. But they are really keen to access more opportunities. And they're also very conscious that activities are inclusive and culturally diverse. Um, which is fantastic to hear. So following on from that, moving on to our recommendations to Creative Bexley. The three key things that came out from the research the, and our learnings um, that we've pulled together as our recommendations, and you'll be able to access the report after this session, the first one is to explore the development of a communication strategy that joins up the offer to increase awareness for young people, meeting them where they are. So we then had conversations around where do they look for things. School came up quite a lot and through those gatekeepers. So very much, you know, thinking about teachers and parents and carers still being um, trusted sources of information for young people. They also obviously spend a lot of time online and the places that they were looking at were Instagram and TikTok, for example. Um, you know, and some of them were talking about performances that they have been watching online that they'd seen clips of um, you know in the social media platforms um, so yeah so that's a key thing to think about you know is where are young people looking for information and how can we make sure that that information gets to them um, you know so whether that's something around um, a push to uh, teachers and schools across the borough as well as you know how can you access parents and carers as well all things to to have a think about the second thing um what is to explore developing more opportunities that meet young people's needs um, so they are more inclusive diverse fun and develop their skills both online and in person and no one art form particularly came out through this so it's just more um, the idea of just developing more opportunities and then also um, increasing their awareness of those things that are happening and any new activity that comes along. And the final um, recommendation was to continue the conversation with young people. You know, they're really keen to have their voices heard and to shape opportunities. Um, and as one respondent wrote, you know, what's the point in surveys if you never take any feedback? And there was quite a lot of queries like that of why should I tell you if you never do anything about it, which is really disheartening, but also an opportunity for us to say, we're asking because we want to know, we are listening and we're gonna do something about it. So, you know, that um, we'd recommend continuing that conversation um, in a number of different ways. And Stephen will tell you a little bit more about that shortly. So yeah, that's all from me. Um, it's a whistle stop tour through a big, a bigger report, um, which they'll share afterwards. Um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure doing this piece of research with you all. Thank you so much, Liz. That's fantastic. And thank you so much for showing me his insights and recommendations. And I think the recommendations are real 
they're really pertinent ones that we're all keen to act on now. And I think that's what I can share a little bit about um, what we're going to do next with the LSEP. But thank you so much because it's such a hugely important piece of work that has really guided all our thinking going forward. And Sam, do you want to pop onto the next slide? On our, was that the last slide already? Wow, we've made it uh, to the last slide. But just to tell you, so sort of our, obviously, if you're not part of our mailing list, do join our mailing list. I know Sam will send a follow up. Um, and do get in touch with Sam if you want to know more about our work. But what we're looking to do, we had our culture board meeting this morning. So as a group of part, a broader group of partners across Bexley, we're very keen to communicate our offer, um, not only with young people, but all other stakeholders in the borough. So that's something we're looking at, how we do that reliably, because all the partners are doing lots of interesting work. And we want to make sure that that is communicated efficiently, particularly with schools. And we know that schools have a huge bandwidth challenge they had over 300 missives from the DfE in last year alone. So schools can find it very challenging to respond to the, the things that we know are br brilliant opportunities for them, but we'll do our best to keep trying to reach them amidst the challenge of now, because we know this work is so vital. For young people, we're looking to form a youth group to, to start, as Liz said, to build on the conversations Liz has had through her focus groups, but also to build on this bigger conversation to make sure that young people who not only have been involved in the youth consultation, but young people in the borough feel they can have a say in what we do, because we do want to build work for them, whatever work that might be and whatever would suit their ambitions and interests. Um, because our partners include lots of really interesting art forms. We have a wide variety of work going on in Bexley, but we want to make sure that if there's ways to work collaboratively or work on things together, but really do fit the needs of young people, we want to start doing that. So we will be sending out details to our partners and our schools that we will be launching this youth group to build on these conversations, to keep the conversation going, so they can help shape some of the work we do. We will start our pilot projects with Beau Arts and Arts Train, and speech bubbles in January and February. So we're looking to learn from that. We're keen to get practitioners together. We're keen to get teachers together to talk about the work and the learning we gain from these projects. And hopefully then we can look to the future of the CEP really, starting to build on this work, building groups of certainly communities of practice. We want teachers to get together to share their work. We want teachers to connect with their partners so they can learn about not only signpost opportunities, but to build work together. But for all of this, we want young people to feel they can have a say in what happens and somehow build a mechanism for them to contribute to the work and make some decisions for us. Um, but this is a point now, if anyone had any questions or comments about that consultation, very welcome to, to jump in, whether or not in the chat, or if you wanted to unmute your amongst friends, any comments are welcome. But this has been recorded today and we will make sure we share this on our website. So thank you so much for joining us. That's very brief. Oh, Jack's got a comment. Sorry, Stephen. <laughs> I was just wondering um, how widely you are intending to share the consultation um, beyond this group and maybe beyond Bexley. But. Uh, hopefully, as widely as we can. I mean, that's when we're certainly looking at a communications strategy to deploy the, the findings and the learning. Mm -hmm. There's a few things going on in Bexley at the moment, and I know I've chatted to you informally about the uh, high streets project we're looking at in Bexley Heath and things and there's lots of partners and other groups who aren't connected to the CP who are keen to learn or from young people and work with young people and so we're trying to position this consultation as some learning that could inform some of the work we're about to do rather than to repeat a consultation because we can get survey fatigue we're hoping that people recognize this piece of work has happened it's a really worthwhile investment it's a great piece of work so we're, we're going to make sure that the local authority knows about it and we will put it on our website but we are thinking i know we're hatching a plan to just think how do we disseminate this information and partly why we had this video today really because it now exists in a few different formats we've got a report we can share we've got the one page summary for young people we've got this video of liz sharing her insights and then we'll just want to make sure we have different ways of just sharing it so we can share clips of this on social media we can share it in mailings with our partners but hopefully we'll keep the conversation going really because i think it's it's just the beginning of a, a consultation i think we've got a lot more work to do to keep talking to young people in Bexley. it's a fantastic piece of work and i really look forward to reading it more fully yeah no thank you thank you so for your support thanks jack any other comments or questions before we um close today Brilliant. Thank you so much for being here, but do join our mailing list, follow us on Twitter, 
uh, and otherwise have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you so much. And thank you again, Liz, for all your work and uh, putting this together. It's a real pleasure. And thank you, Sam, for steering us through today. But thank you for joining us. No problem. Thanks, everyone. Nice to see thank you. you. Cheers. And uh, so I'm recording.